My name is Vanessa. I am a self-taught metalsmith and I am the creator of With Love Jewelry. This is actually my third time recording this video. The first time I permanently deleted part of it and couldn't make it work without that part. The second time I accidentally had the echo up <laughs> on my microphone. All you have to do, this is what I did. <laughs> so this is the third time, hopefully third time's a charm. And this video is kind of like a product review slash how I make this product work for me. This is not sponsored. I purchased this product with my own money. And if you've seen any of my other YouTube videos, you probably already know what product I'm talking about. So if you haven't already guessed, the product is the Dremel Engraver. And unfortunately, because this is the second time that I've recorded this, product, this, this video, um, I've already gone through how I do things like a few times. So I'm just gonna give you kind of like a run through. I won't skimp out on you so that you lose kind of the content, um, but I'm running out of tips to work on. <laughs> but I'll give you a run through as to what I do, how I do it and why I do it so that you know what to do if you've purchased this and aren't sure how to use it yet. So when you first get your Dremel engraver, the tip looks a little bit like that. It's a pointed tip, which is awesome for engraving, but not so great if you're looking to use it for bezel walls or burnishing. So this is what I do to make this work for me. Right underneath where the tip is inserted, there's this little flathead screw. And so you just open it up with a flathead screwdriver and instead of having it sit in with the top pointy part sticking up, you're just going to flip it upside down. And if you have a flex shaft, what I recommend doing, this is what I did, is to put that piece upside down in your flex shaft so that the bottom side is up. Just make sure you don't lose it inside there. I don't think it goes deep enough down that you could lose it, but you know, just be safe. Yeah, you it, it, it still sticks out plenty. But give yourself, you know, enough room to work with, tighten it up, and now you're gonna use your flex shaft as a lathe. Don't do this in your silver or gold catch trays. And don't use any sandpaper that you use regularly with gold and silver, meaning I hope that you have a, what's the word? I can't think of the word right now. I hope that you have like a container with all of the stuff that you're going to send to get uh, like the scrap metal. Oh my God, I can't think of the word. It's where they take the scrap metal and they melt it down and they, you know, recycle it and they send you back like the money from all of the metal that you've sent them. What I do, I, I, if I think of the word, I'll put, it, I'll put it in here. But what I do is I take old pieces of sandpaper that are already used, that I've used with my silver and gold and that maybe they're like wonky and I'm not gonna use them for anything. And I use these pieces to sand down my engraver tip. What you do is you just start up your flex shaft and then you go through every grit of sandpaper that you have. I go from 220, I go from 220 all the way up to 3000 and you're just going to shape and sand this down to a nice smooth finish. You can do a rounded finish. I have a rounded finish one somewhere. This is more of my flat finish. Um, if you want to get more of like a finish with like a flatter side, use your files, not in your catch tray. Do it with files that you no longer use for silver or gold, like old files. If you've got a grinding disc, that works really well for this, but try as hard as possible not to cross contaminate whatever metal this little piece is with your precious metals. Once you go through all of your grits of sandpaper, and this is my highest grit, and I just finished it off, and now it's nice and smooth. Now we're going to polish this. So always remember, whatever you're using on your metal is going to transfer onto your metal. Meaning if you're using something that's very coarse and gritty, that texture, and finish is going to transfer onto your metal. So we always wanna make sure that the things that we're working with 
are smooth, polished, and clean so that our metal isn't getting dirty or distorted or textured if we don't want it to be textured. So what I like to do is I'll use one of these rubber polishing discs. Now we take this back out of our flex shaft, put it back into your Dremel. It's just easier to hold. And then put your rubber polishing wheel into your flex shaft. And then you're just going to go over, I'm trying to keep this away from my hair just for safety reasons. You're just going to go over your new tip with your rubber wheels to get it nice and shiny and polished. And that way you have like a, you have a mirror finish on your tool so that when it's touching the metal that you're working it with, you get that mirror finish as well. In my Amazon storefront, I have created an entire, I think it's like a folder. I don't quite know what they call them. Entire folder of the tools that I've purchased for this engraver. So it's the engraver. It's a set of five tips that you can purchase. I think it's like eight bucks to get five others of these. Something else that I highly recommend getting as well are some brass rods. So these are three millimeter brass rods and I'm not sure if they're exactly the same diameter. It looks to be like they are, I haven't measured, but you can cut these down to size, file and sand them to whatever tip you'd like and they will fit inside the engraver. And what's great about these is they're a little bit softer than working with this type of metal. So if you're using like if you've got a bezel on an opal and you're trying to be really gentle with it and careful, you might want to use the brass instead of this really hard metal. But it's just, it's another great option. It's super cheap. I don't remember how much exactly all of these brass rods were. But again, it is linked in my Amazon storefront. This is 20 pieces at three millimeters. So if you chop up a chunk like this, you've got plenty of brass left over to do whatever you'd like to with and make a lot of different shaped burnishers or bezel pushers. The only negative that I have found so far with this tool that you will probably see on the reviews if you go on Amazon and read the reviews is the noise. And it is incredibly loud. And so that is something to take into consideration if you have other people around you where you're working that maybe need quiet or you've got sleeping children. So I'm just going to go through how it sounds. It has a dial on here and there are five different levels and then half sizes in between. So I'm just going to start it at one so you can hear kind of what it sounds like at the lowest setting and then all the way to the highest setting. Obviously this is a little bit different how it, than how it sounds in person, but you'll kind of get an idea. So this is one. And we're just going to go up. To be honest, I really never use it on five. I probably use it around three, three and a half the most, but it's still loud. So that's the only drawback that I have found with this tool. I completely love it and don't care about the sound. I just, you know, use it strategically if I need to. It's an exceptional tool and gives you amazing results for a great price. If you have any questions that I maybe haven't answered, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Hopefully I can answer them. Just wanted to remind you, this is not sponsored. Uh, I don't even know that Dremel knows who I am, but <laughs> I purchased this with my own money. I love it. I think it's a great tool, especially for the price. And if you're maybe a self-taught metalsmith, or I've actually seen like jewelry schools who use this and professional jewelers who use this, professional meaning they were like a trained jeweler. It's a great tool. I highly recommend it. And if you're looking for maybe easier or safer ways to push down really big bezel walls, this is the way to go. If you liked this video, I'd love for you to like it and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and to watch me grow on my journey as a self-taught metalsmith. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.